Hello, my name is Latasha Ngube, and welcome to The Gist with Mega Growth, where we talk to strong and beautiful women about really everything. Our guest today is an author, a mom, and most recently, an executive producer. If you want to find out who that is, then get your tribe, get together, and join the conversation. See you on the couch. They say a woman's hair is her glory. And with that, ladies, keep your standards high, but your ponytails even higher. Stay strong, stay beautiful. Welcome back to the show. And with me today is Arese Ogu, who is the founder of Smart Money Africa, a personal finance platform tailored to the African millennial. She's also an entrepreneur, author of two books, The Smart Money Woman and The Smart Money Tribe. And just recently, she's made her debut as an executive producer of The Smart Money Woman series. Welcome to the show, Arese. Thank you for having me. It's very good to have you here. Good to see you. You look very nice. Thank you so much. Awesome. Um, so let's get right to it. We've been in a pandemic. Um, women will remain women. We need to be beautiful. We need to stay looking fly and everything. How can one manage money during an economic meltdown such as this one? Well, obviously, the pandemic hit everyone really hard. And I felt like it was like we were playing musical chairs and finally the music stopped and everyone was wondering, do I have a chair or do I not have a chair? People kept talking about, or every time we talk about emergency funds, emergency funds, the fact that it's important for you to have a foundation for your financial life and have a fallback plan, it always seemed theoretical until something like coronavirus happens and people, um, are not sure where their next paycheck is coming from or if their businesses are going to survive. Now, your emergency fund is the first thing that I think that everyone needs to look at. Do I have six to 12 months of living expenses saved up somewhere else that is not going towards, you know, bills, that's not going towards saving for your long-term goals? Um, I think the first thing is definitely look at, do I have enough, you know, emergency savings to be able to um, hold up during this pandemic and if i don't what do i need to do about it right now so that if something like this happens again i'm prepared so because of the way nigeria is structured everyone knows that most people live from one paycheck to another mm -hmm. and if that's been the situation how then can you begin to save within a pandemic so for me it's about discipline it's about understanding that if you want to get ahead long term you have to put a little aside from every single thing that you make. So the mentality has to be the same whether you're earning 10 Naira or whether you're earning 10 million. And yes, we're in a pandemic and at this point, you you are literally like left holding the bag. If you are doing what you're supposed to be doing with your personal finances, then you'd be, you know, in a good, relatively good place. But if you want, I feel like it's also like a good, like wake up call to say, how do I make sure that like I can withstand, you know, different shocks in the short term that don't destroy like my long-term financial goals but don't put me you know in a place where like i'm cash strapped so if the 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 important thing is to now look at whatever it is that you're earning and saying how do i put 20 percent aside how do i put 10 percent aside so that we don't constantly stay in that place where we're revolving doors you know for our money and tomorrow has a shot at being better than today because the mentality most people have is oh you know i don't earn enough i don't earn enough but if we really think about it, it i always love to give the example of when you were in um, nyc if you did use service and you were earning like the bare minimum and would complain and say oh my god i can't wait till i get a better job and then you get the better job and then five years later you get you know you've been promoted or you've changed jobs, or you started a business and you're earning relatively way more, but you're not, your savings haven't increased in proportion to you know, your income. So sometimes it's important for us to not think so much about, oh, I'm not earning so much, but it's about creating the discipline today so that when you can do it when you're earning 10 now, you can also do it when you're earning 10 million. The women who watch us want to know, mm -hmm. how much is too much to spend on hair? <laughs> I think it is relative. I think it's relative to your income, what your lifestyle choices or goals are. 
I definitely resent spending so much money on hair. So I try to keep like a spending limit on wigs, you know, getting my hair done and all those type of things. But for everyone, I feel like it's different. So it depends on how your pockets, how your, where your pockets reaches and, you know, what your own particular preferences are. Speaking of um, putting um, wigs, I think you said putting wigs aside. In this in this period, we've seen a lot of people not having to, of course, purchase new hair, new wigs, new mm. lines and stuff like that. Most people are reverting back to hair care, you know, carrying their own natural hair. Mm. You yourself, you're carrying cornrows right now. I have my hair up in a ponytail. Like most people are just not doing the most anymore. Mm. Do you think that there is any merit financially mm. to this versus like, obviously not purchasing hair, but like, you know, carrying on wigs and stuff like that? Okay, so for me, my own approach to personal finance is not to judge people's purchases. Absolutely. I don't think that we have a right to tell people, you know, what they can buy and what they can't buy. What I believe in is, and what my books are really about is self-awareness identifying for yourself what your own priorities are what you what you value um so i always say if you look if i look at your bank statements does it tell me um, what you value or does it tell me what your family say that you should do or what your friends say that you should do so i don't i don't like to say to people oh this is how much you should spend on this or this is how much you should you know spend on your lifestyle it all boils down to spending intentionally on the things that you love if it's hair fantastic and cutting expenses ruthlessly on the things that you don't really care about so if i'm a, i don't have a right to judge someone who decides that wigs are their life or you know spending all their money on hair care is their life right because what if my own um spending habits tilt towards food so i like going to eat out that's not less important to the person so it boils down to self-awareness and knowing the things um, that your income can support your book the smart money woman has been revolutionary to say the least in nigeria across africa on the scale of one to ten how would you rate the glam factor of the women on the smart money ten <laughs> ten because i wanted to depict um, a certain type of african woman an african woman who's modern who likes fashion who um, likes the good life but is trying to find that balance between not being poor and saving towards long-term assets but still finding a balance um, with their lifestyle you know choices so yeah i'll definitely say that zuri um, and her friends are very glam they represent different kinds of nigerian women one's a fashion designer one's a lawyer one's you know in real estate and they all have different personalities but i think that fashion definitely kind of brings them together because they want to look a certain way. Most women at some point in their lives get to the point where they pivot. And from that moment on, the vision becomes very clear, either what their purpose is or on determining the woman that they're going to be moving forward. And we like to call that on the show, your mega growth moment. Oh, wow. What would you say has been your mega growth moment? Hmm. I'll definitely say that, you know, starting when my marriage fell apart and I basically had to rethink my finances, it was super expensive to move um, houses, pay two years rent up front, okay. you know, um, pay service charge one year up front and buy new furniture um, all with a one year old child in tow. And I was like, bruv, <laughs> if I work in financial services and this is a huge expense for me that clearly I haven't been saving and investing enough. So it kind of put me on the path to smart money because in trying to um, sort out my own finances and figure out strategies that worked for me, um, it was helping other women through my articles and then, you know, the books. Thank you so much for joining us. Looking forward to everything that you have to offer and we'll be watching the Smart Money series. Thank you so much for having me. Awesome. Here are my three takeaways from the conversation with Arese Ogu. Number one, discipline is required when trying to save whether your income is at 10 Naira or 10 million. Number two, your finances will always reflect your priorities. Number three, 
every woman needs a fallback plan for a rainy day and it should be at least six to 12 months of expenditure to be able to tide you over. And with that, ladies, keep your standards high, but your ponytails even higher. Stay strong, stay beautiful. See you next week. Hi, I'm Arisa Ugu, author and executive producer of The Smart Money Woman, and I'm on The Gist with Megaglow. Stay strong, stay beautiful.